Welcome to part 5 of the Enrage Rabbit Carrot Feeder V2 build. In this video, we'll focus on electronics and software. This is the MMB CAN bus controller from Big Tree Tech. Here are the reset and boot buttons. We'll need to write the firmware to the controller. And of course, we'll have to plug in the USB cable, which will plug into our Pi. And we need to set the USB power jumper here. Uh, to get this software initially loaded. And here I'm holding the boot and the reset. I release the reset and then the boot, which puts it into programming mode. With the USB cable plugged into the Pi and powered up, you should be able to enter LSUSB. And here you should see your, our CAN bus controller. And it should be in DFU mode, which means it's, it's ready to accept software. And here is the ID number, which can be useful a little bit later as well. The best directions online are at the Esoterical website, uh, which I've posted the URL to this website in the description of the video, but it's really well laid out. Follow the steps, make sure you identify and follow the steps that are set up for the board. You can't go wrong. Throughout this video, I'm directly going to this website and I'm copying and pasting to step through this process. Start by pulling the latest version of Catapult. This will gather all the source code libraries so we can build it. And again, I'm copying this directly from the esoterical site. And here I'm switching into the Catapult directory that was created from our pull. And then I'm executing or running make menu config, which will allow us to configure the settings to properly build this. Back on the esoterical website here, you can see uh, where I've gone to the list of the different CAN controller boards, and I am selecting the one I've got. And here it gives you some important details about getting it into DFU mode so it can be programmed. But most importantly, here are the details for how you configure make menu, how you configure menu config uh, for catapult. And I'm simply making sure these values match what I've got in menu config. And here I'm checking that the processor is correct. Uh, the bootloader settings are correct, clock, CAN bus pins, the offset, make sure CAN bus speed is correct, matches what you're already using on CAN bus if you already have it installed. Then here are some other settings just for convenience sake. And then once that's done, you can exit or rather quit and then hit yes to save the configuration. And then run make. Here I'm just running ls to see what's in this directory. You don't really need to do this. Um, however, here I'm moving into the out subdirectory, and here I'm taking a look, and you should be seeing the compile that compiled um, file for catapult, and that's catapult.bin. After that, you can run the DFU util dash L, which should give you a list of any devices that are in DFU mode. And here again, we see the address and this CAN bus device. And you should take a note of the address because we'll be using that later and as well as that ID number. And here I'm copying, pasting from the esoterical site, uh, the DFU util command. And again, making sure these ID numbers and uh, locations match exactly what's on my device. And then when you execute that, you may see an error, which will be fine. But as long as you have file downloaded successfully, you're doing well. And this is catapult is now downloaded as the bootloader on your CAN bus controller card. So now just to check, I can use um, Python 3, the script, the flash tool script. 
and here it checks the nodes. It finds a catapult node, and that's the UUID. And here I'm copying and pasting it for later use. So now I'm going to switch into the Clipper directory because we have to build a version of Clipper that we can download onto the controller, onto the MCU. And so here I'm simply setting it up again, just as the esoterical site says. You can also find the same details in the Big Tree Tech instructions as well. And then save and exit. And then we are going to run make. Well, make clean first and then make. And then I shut down the Clipper service that's running on the Pi. And then here I'm gathering the UUID of the MCU that's running Catapult. And then here I'm going in and I'm changing uh, the UUID that I copied from the esoterical site to make sure it has the UUID of my actual device. Uh, need to do that if you want this to work. Then here I'm checking these two, make sure they match. And then I hit enter and execute. And again, notice here it says flash success and write complete 14 pages. Again, you might have a couple mess error messages here, but as long as you've got the flash success or the write complete, you should be good. And then here I'm checking again and I can see Clipper is installed and the UUID of Clipper. So this Canvas UUID is important because this is what goes in your printer.cfg file uh, that allows Clipper to know and understand exactly where this controller is, this MCU and Clipper is. Here I'm restarting the Clipper service because we shut it down. If you haven't done so, it's time to insert the wiring. And here I insert the servo. And then right after the servo comes the encoder, which on the board is labeled sensor and then the stepper for the gearbox, and then the stepper for the selector goes in right after. And then for now, skipping the RGB port and the next two ports, which are reserved, can start to insert the switches from lowest to highest. So for RGB lighting, my kit came with a single pre-wired LED. Then it came, also had this string, and then it had this circuit board loaded with LED lighting. And really the question you need to answer is how do you want to connect these and do you even want to use them all? And so there are multiple ways to connect these. Um, obviously there's only one socket on the controller. So if you wanted to, you can connect these two strings in parallel. You obviously need to re-terminate these. And if you do, uh, when you turn on LED zero, LED zero on both turn on. When you switch to colors, zero on both change to the exact same color. So that's certainly one way that you can do it. And this pattern follows through for all the LEDs. And uh, that's certainly one reasonable way to do it. Um, but then there's a bit of a question, what happens to this one? Honestly, I don't know. I never tried it. <laughs> um, but you can probably daisy chain it onto the very end if you choose to daisy chain these all together. And this is the second option. If you take a look here at the end of the circuit board, there's a single uh, terminal here, which is the signal. And you can take that and you can solder the one signal wire to it and then connect the other, other uh, the power wires to actual power. And then what happens is the very first LED on this string becomes the ninth LED and so on all the way through. And that way you can also attach the single LED 
onto the very end of the other string as well, and you get this one nice long continuous piece. This does have a little bit of an impact on wiring, as you'll have to work and uh, work around how you wire this, and you may have to add some additional wiring to make this work as well. I went for the third option, and I know this isn't going to make some of you very happy, but since my ERCF is all black, uh, there was really no need for me to daisy chain these because I got the feeling that you really needed some lighter um, 3D printed parts to take advantage of this uh, string of LEDs. So I decided to just go with the circuit board. On top of that, where I intend to mount my ERCF, I'm really only going to be able to see the circuit board anyway. So it just didn't make sense to me to use the others. And so those, of course, simply mount in this little tray. And of course, I've got the cover here with uh, the diffusers inserted as well. So then install the RGB cable as well. So this next item took me a little while to figure out. It's not in the ERCF manuals. It's really in the BTT manual, and it's not fully called out. These three pins here that are next to each of the stepper motor sockets, they control where the power to the stepper motors is coming from. If you use the two closest pins closest to the socket, that means you're going to be getting or drawing power from the CAN bus cable itself. If you use the other two pins, that means the power is coming from the 24 volts that you might have connected to the board separately. I only use the CAN bus cable and it, it, the stepper modus just would not work. You have to have this set properly. If you have nothing plugged in, no jumper across either of these three pins, nothing works. And of course, if you have the wrong set of pins selected, it's not going to work, or at least the stepper motors aren't. Make sure the two closest pins to the socket are jumpered if you're going to use CAN bus or use the other two if you're not. So now I went to the Happy Hair GitHub site, and I have a link to that in the description of the video. And here I got out of the Clipper directory, and I've cloned the Happy Hair code from GitHub. And again, I'm copying and pasting this from their GitHub. The instructions are there. And now I've just switched into the Happy Hair directory and I'm running the install. And here it's asking us uh, what ERCF are we working with? And in this case, uh, version two, uh, it's asking us for the number of gates. And basically you just step through and follow the directions. And so here I'm telling it which controller I'm using and then it on its own tried to look up and find the ID of it and it's asking you different uh, questions about your setup. Um, will you have the LEDs installed? Um, the servo, and again, just go through and follow the directions. The one thing I got to say, this installer is amazing, and actually the Happy Hair software is install is amazing. Um, if you get the chance, opportunity, uh, the GitHub site has uh, a list of where you can go to maybe provide thanks <laughs> um, via a small donation. I highly recommend you do. Um, this person has put an enormous amount of work, time, and effort. Uh, this would have been many, many times harder without all this software. Um, but anyway, these are the options I chose as I went through. And if you're using the Seabor kit as I am with the same Big Tree Tech controller, uh, these for the most part should work for you as well. And then you just wait for this to finish after you've answered all the questions. Um, be sure to take a look at the notes. There's still some things that have to be done, some configuration changes you'll need to make on your own. If you're using LEDs and the kit does come with LEDs, you'll need to install this as well. And I've got a link in this description below. Um, 
this GitHub repository. And again, they're fairly simple instructions here how to install this. But if you want to see it, here it goes. And again, I'm copy and pasting from the GitHub. So I'm moving out of the happy hair directory. Here I'm cloning the code from GitHub. I'm switching into the directory. And then I'm running the installer and that should be it. And then next go into your printer.cfg file. And here you can see where I'm setting up the includes for the Enrage Rabbit carrot feeder, or rather for the Happy Hair software. And then restarting Clipper. And then you've got a series of files here that you probably need to get into and possibly make some changes. I did here, I went in and made sure these pins aligned with the Big Tree Tech MCU. And I will post these files shortly, within a week or less of this video. Then go back to the Happy Hair GitHub. And there is some instructions here for verifying and validating your hardware uh, as part of the setup and configuration. And if you've built a printer like a Voron or anything like that, this is very much the same. Um, just making sure steppers are working right, pin assignments are correct, things are moving in the right direction as they need be. And uh, I went through these one by one. And again, I will post my results. But be sure to take your time, read through, and work through these. They're not difficult. They're actually quite easy. Um, and again, things like checking end stops, other sensors, and so on. You do need to make sure this all works before you try for the first time. If you use Clipper Screen, you'll want to install the Happy Hair edition of Clipper Screen. I found this to be super useful. In fact, I find it more useful than Clipper Screen uh, without it. <laughs> um, this also became really useful during tuning and adjusting as well. Um, this, this is well worth installing. I highly recommend it. And it's pretty quick and easy to do. And you can start by copying and pasting into your shell. And this clones copy. And here I told it how many spools of filament it can handle and ran the install script, which runs very quickly. Once Clipper screen restarts, as you can see here, we've got a little carrot, a new menu option. And once you hit it, you've got the status of all the ports and you can do some great things like home it. Um, you can adjust the servos up and down, which is important because you'll have to install part of that next. And uh, basically anything you could want is here. Just before going on to the full calibration phase in the GitHub, you will need to install um, this lever on the servo. And um, using the clipper screen, you can adjust it up or down, adjust it up, and then you can bolt this on. And then once you do, you can finish off your testing and then go ahead and move forward with calibration. But it's relatively easy to install, but you might overlook it. So just a friendly reminder. And then here using clipper screen to raise and lower the arm, um, I inserted a piece of filament just to make sure I can move it. And then I set the lever down and the filament no longer um, pulls out easily. Uh, it's the extruder has got a real good grip here. And so again, you'll do this as part of calibration. There will be one more part to this video series and it will involve the changes to the tool head. 
uh, to cut filament. And if you found this series useful, please click subscribe.